Welcome, welcome, welcome. Peggy and I are so glad you could spend a little part of your weekend with us. And uh, I think we're actually going to have a fall weekend for a change. It is fall. <laughs> yes. First weekend in October. And I really don't by. mind. No, I know. No. I'm ready for, don't for mind. some fall temperatures. We, we got some rain at my house this week. Mm -hmm. A good rain for mm -hmm. the first time in heaven knows when. Yep. And so, and I don't mind the cool weather takes away those mosquitoes, so come on, cool weather. Well, and Rob is itching to get a fire in our fireplace. So. Oh, <laughs> that, that's cozy. That's cozy. Absolutely. Well, we have a great show for you today because it is bulb time. And Peggy is... is if anybody knows about bulbs, this woman does. <laughs> so you've got lots of great tips for us today. Well, we hope so. Mm -hmm. And all of us have a love affair with bulbs, those that bloom in the spring, because they're just so welcome. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, we're going to really talk about how you can keep that love affair going, you know. Number one, if you plan appropriately, and I will be talking about some of the unusual things today, right. and if you plan appropriately, you can have these beautiful blossoms from January th into June. Mm -hmm. Little and, and they're simply beautiful. But the love of air sometimes ends when that foliage right. begins to <coughs> die back. Mm -hmm. So we're going to share with you some of the ways to keep the love affair going. going. And I, I just have a little fun shot that uh, I'd like you to go to. Aww. See? Yes. It is a love affair. Mm -hmm. And we all have a love affair with daffodils. There are so many. And when you stand in front of our displays, you can walk through that and pick the ones you like best because they all do so well. And the critters don't eat Yay. them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, before we get started, we have a lot going on today yes. at Mary Phil Garden Center, uh, today and, and the next uh, week or two. So let's get you brought up to date. First of all, we are very, very excited because today kicks off our Fall Garden Festival at our Gainesville location. There's a, a poster there for you to see. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be Saturdays and Sundays, every Saturday and Sunday in the month of October. Uh, just fun things for the kids. We've got... Um, hay rides, we've got pumpkin painting, face painting, um, goodness, moon bounce and slide, just lots of things going on, fun things going on. There'll be plant specials for the, for the adults, got things for the adults as well. Absolutely. Uh, and of course, our people are there to help you with any questions you have. So it's just something fun and interesting. Kick off the season, come out and celebrate the season. So that is mm -hmm. every Saturday and Sunday during the month of October. It'll be fun. It will be I really of think fun. it'll be fun. Lots of fun. <laughs> and then our seminars continue, as always. We, we've had a great selection of seminars this year and great response. We really appreciate that. But today at our Merrifield location, um, Chef Lillian is going to be talking about cooking with fresh herbs. Now, this is always a very, these cooking ones are always very popular. Uh, and, and she usually gives a little sample as she's, uh, as she's doing this. Yes, too. and the beauty of this is as you're learning those herbs that she's cooking with, it's a great time to plant them too. We mm -hmm. still have beautiful herbs that can, and it's perfect time to plant them. Absolutely. Yes. And that, this one is at the Maryfield location, right? The Maryfield Community Hall, which is right next to our Maryfield location in Maryfield at 10 a.m. At our Fair Oaks la location today, uh, Curb Appeal. Uh, we're going to be, it, it's a great, uh, let's see who's doing Curb Appeal today. I have my wrong thing here. That's right, Seth Warner's doing it. One yes. of our great designers, Seth Warner. And, and people don't realize how important curb appeal is. We know that beautiful flowers make us feel good, but it does a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. A lot. Now at this time when, you know, we're hoping real estate is going to continue to improve, that's one way to do it. Right. Is to be sure you have curb appeal. It's certainly our first house Helped us sell our first Absolutely. house, that's for sure. Yeah. That's at 10 a.m. at our Fair Oaks location. At the Gainesville location today, Michael Fay, he's going to be talking about fall magic with trees and shrubs. There's so many ways to do fall magic. Fall magic is, is, is a fun term that uh, we're all been using, <laughs> but uh, 
they're beautiful this time of year. So he's going to give you lots of tips. And uh, he is, a, is one of our certified arborists. So that's yes. uh, he really knows his trees and shrubs. So take advantage of that. That's at our Gainesville location again at 10 a.m. All of these are free, great ways to learn more about gardening and opportunities to ask questions. So take advantage of that. Next week, uh, we've got uh, some more great topics. <coughs> we have at the Maryfield location, <coughs> my dad was going to be talking, doing his uh, reprising his seminar on All how right. to be a successful gardener. Good. And then we'll also be doing critter control out at Gainesville. So that is, we just have those seminars because in a second I'll tell you why we just have the two <laughs> seminars. Uh, this weekend and next weekend, we're very pleased, we're talking about bulbs right. and members of the Washington Daffodil Society are going to be on hand at, uh, over the next two weeks at, uh, at all of our locations. Now today they're going to be at Maryfield and Fair Oaks. Right. Tomorrow they're going to be at Maryfield and Gainesville and then next weekend they'll be at all three places. Um, right. But it's 1130 to 3 that they're going to be there to answer your questions. I, that is just so wonderful. We really appreciate Well, it is. That. And I know most of these are many of these people personally. Mm -hmm. And and yes, daffodils and, and bulbs in general right. is a big part of their lives. Yeah. And they certainly know their business. Right. Yeah. They know and they their... love to share. <laughs> That's what these societies are all about. Right. It's a teaching thing. You know, and I hope these societies, you know, sometimes the numbers dwindle. So these are great things to, to be a part of. Garden right. clubs and plant right. societies. Really take advantage of those. A uh, couple things coming up next week, as I mentioned, because we're, we're only doing the two, at our Fair Oaks location, instead of having the seminar, we're at all weekend, we're going to be having, well, we are, the Old Dominion Chrysanthemum <laughs> Society. We're going to be hosting, but the Old Dominion Chrysanthemum Society is going to be having their annual show, Chrysanthemum Show, and their, their theme is a blast from the past. So that's going to be next Saturday and Sunday um, at the Fair Oaks location. So take advantage of that. And then on Sunday at our Gainesville location, the Northern Virginia chapter of the Azalea Society of America is going to be having a public auction of uncommon and deciduous azaleas, not azaleas that you can you know, just no, buy at, at right. garden centers. These are ones right. that they have cult cultivated and that type of thing. So. Lots going on. Uh, really quickly, our new fall hours, just to remind you, we're now open. We're not closing at dark since it's getting dark a little, little earlier. So instead of 8, so it's about a 7.15-ish right. type of thing, uh, Monday through Saturday. It's still 9 to 6 on Sunday. So mm -hmm. before we go to break, do we have time for a do. couple of picks? We do. Let, let's bring up a couple of things. We're going to talk about the uncommon bulbs today, one of which is cyclamen. Now, this is a hardy cyclamen and it is a very rewarding little plant in bloom right now in my garden it will have its beautiful flowers over quite a period of time and then send up very attractive foliage and in the next picture is another one that needs to be in the ground as soon as you can get it there and that is the dog tooth violet. It's called erythronium. Both of these bulbs are very perishable. They don't have a long shelf life and so please come in and try these and get them in the ground right away. And if we can come close here, I'll show you why. This is the bulb of the cyclamen, and you can see that what it wants to do right now is bloom. You can see the little blooms already. Give it a short soak in some lukewarm water and get it in the ground. And um, you might also take advantage of the dog tooth violet, which is not a violet at all. Interesting, interesting plant. Be sure you feel the bulbs in the package. If they're firm, they're good. If they're not firm, they're no good. Okay. okay. All right. We're going to take a simple. quick break and <laughs> talk more about bulbs. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. This is the perfect time of year to plant your bulbs and get ready for a beautiful spring. So we've got some great uh, ideas for you and varieties of bulbs, some of the yeah. usual and unusual today. Right. Well, primarily we're trying to share some of the ones that are underused. Mm -hmm. 
and some that extend the season tremendously. And some of those are the what was referred to as the minor mm -hmm. bulbs, primarily because they're smaller, mm -hmm. smaller in the bulb size and in the stature of the bulb itself. But sometimes good things come in small packages. <laughs> okay. So, we want to run through some of those very quickly and make that introduction because they're worth their space and some of them want their own space. One of those bulbs is quite the performer, the little snowdrops or galanthus. And they can come into bloom in December. They did last year in mild winter. Mm -hmm. Bloomed throughout January and into February. And in the next picture, it really shows where do they want to be. They do not want to compete with perennials or strong growing things. The ideal place for these bulbs is underneath deciduous trees. These happen to be beneath um, the border planting of crepe myrtle and small other small trees. And the, it's just a delight when they come into bloom. They reproduce pleasantly, not obnoxiously. And in this particular spot, they reproduced for uh, in, in and among the little dwarf mondo grass. Now, here is another wonderful minor bulb and there are several of these and by planting some of each you can have two to three months of bloom. It is the Scylla or Chianodonxa. There's several different varieties, several different colors. This one is, is again one that has to have its own space and can be appreciated that way and is enjoyed beneath the canopy of those uh, crepe myrtle. So, great thing. In the next couple of pictures, we'll go through rather quickly because it's iris. And when people say iris, they think immediately of the German iris, those big flamboyant, wonderful iris that come into bloom usually in late April and, and in May. This one is Iris Catherine Hodgkin. Very short little guy, four to five inches tall. Puts on a great show. Wants its own space also. Do not plant it in your perennial border. It can't handle that. Loves to be in a woodland pathway, as does this little Iris reticulata, and it's fantastic. Moving on through these, because I just want to give you a bird's eye view of these things. Here is a tulip that so far my own personal dear I feel like they are, you know, Ugh. doesn't eat. <laughs> it's the species tulips. And they perform for a long time and they live for years. So look for species tulips. This one happens to be Classiana and in the next picture introduces you to some of the very miniature daffodils. These are my favorites, absolutely. Hawara and uh, the species tulip. And in this particular one, again, the low growing, smaller daffodils planted with the scylla. In the following picture, a uh, wonderful, wonderful thing to pair with these daffodils and all these bulbs. If, if we go on to the next picture now. Oh, <coughs> oh it's, it, we may not have that. Don't have sudden. that picture? Okay. okay. Well, it's it's a fantastic um, group. Oh no, of actually, bulbs. we do, we do have that one. Go ahead and show that do next we? that next one. Okay, if we do, because well, we'll talk about it anyway. If we don't have it, okay. One great thing to pair those things with mm -hmm. is Helleborus. I cannot praise Helleborus enough. Mm -hmm. We're talking about companions, <clears throat> and the first bulbs that we were talking about want their own space. Right. Don't crowd them into a perennial border. These little miniature daffodils can hold their own as long as they're not too crowded. But one of the things that pair well with them is Helleborus. Gotcha. Okay. Great plan. Okay. Yes. All right. Did forget to, to mention to you at the beginning of the show, we will be taking your phone calls later on right. in the show. So if you have any questions, save those up. Um, 
So we, uh, we will take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll give you some more great ideas with Bob. Stay tuned. Pumpkins, pumpkins, pumpkins. You, you were you talking know. before the show about how beautiful these pumpkins I are. I have to tell you, <laughs> and you know, I'm, I'm at the Fair Oaks right. location, okay, and uh, Andrea has done the most magnificent job of displaying she these has. pumpkins. Mm -hmm. It's like, you got to have it. <laughs> <laughs> they are fantastic. I mean, they're very color. The white mm -hmm. pumpkins, the blue pumpkins, and everything in between. Oh, All great. right, we'll go back. <laughs> okay, I digress. <laughs> That's okay. You're allowed. Can't help it. You know, these. She these... does get passionate about these pumpkins, <laughs> I gotta tell you. <laughs> yes, I do, and they're absolutely beautiful. All right, let's go back to that picture and get okay. me back on track. <laughs> we, we spoke before we took our break about companion plants and that without a doubt Helleborus has got to be one of the best of the best. It comes into bloom with the first tiny bit of warm weather usually in January, blooms through February, March and is still evident through April. Plus the leaves are gorgeous and they're evergreen. Now I say evergreen. Got to be trimmed back when they look ratty just as these blooms are coming up. Pair them with anything. Pair with them with the tulips, with the big daffodils. They can hold their own. And besides which, they're a little promiscuous. Ooh. They just seed themselves all <laughs> over the place. And it's delightful. It's not annoying, okay? They're wonderful. All right, let's move on to the next thing. We haven't talked very much about tulips. And actually, I'm going to talk a lot more about tulips next week. Here again, the Gregi, the Kaufmania, the species tulips are usually the earliest of the bloomers and have the greatest longevity. They're smaller. Here is paired with Lamium. Lamium is just, I'll say emerging. It's there, but not as obvious until later and then it grows and covers the dying foliage. So these are the things that you can pair with perennials, certain perennials, and be delighted. In the next picture, we'll show you Tiarella. Tiarella is a wonderful thing. You could also, it blooms, but the foliage is beautiful, could also pair these smaller growing tulips with uh, hookerella mm -hmm. also. It's, it's wonderful, or hookera. And in the following picture are the grape hyacinths. Coming in beautiful blues, bicolor blue, whites, and just about anything in between. No, no pinks in the grape hyacinths. Now, warning, the grape hyacinths put up their uh, foliage in the fall, so that's normal, all right? Don't worry about it. The anemone. There are many different kinds of anemone. And there's some in bloom right now, the fall anemones. They're tall. They're gorgeous. Come in because you can buy it as it's in bloom and, go and know what you're getting and loving, mm -hmm. I'm sure. But this little guy's a bulb. And it blooms in the spring and has beautiful foliage. This is one that the little bulb is very swivel, but looks like it's dried up. <laughs> you can plump it up, okay? Soak it in lukewarm water overnight and then put it immediately in, into the ground and you will be delighted. And it works beautifully with the small bulbs. Definitely underused another iris. This is an, a Dutch iris, it's a bulb and plant them in, in little masses. Excellent cut flower. You will be so glad you did. And in the next picture, another delightful thing. We spoke of the little snowdrops that are among the very first bulbs to show. Well, this one comes later and looks very similar, but it's a much taller and stronger growing uh, bulb. 
and it is planted in front of and actually mingles with mm -hmm. a golden spirea. I am a follower of spirea because they'll grow in full sun, they'll grow in part shade, they mix with everything. After they bloom in the spring, you can shear them back and they'll bloom again. What more do you want from a plant? That's for sure. It's just totally, totally gorgeous. And in the next picture, you can see my garden is some degree of shade everywhere. I have no absolute full sun. And it is a wonderland. Well, it's a very natural area, <laughs> and it has evolved over many, many years. Not many people <laughs> stay in one place as long as we That's true, very have, true. You know. But this can show you how beautiful spring can be, and be relatively low maintenance, mm -hmm. because this is an area that I sort of leave alone after the spring season. Uh, it is the woodland area, and the, it's masked with hellebores. It's got every kind of bulb you can imagine. It has Pieris japonica, which is a beautiful shrub also. So there's a lot going on. Next picture. Need to move through these fairly quickly because I'm trying to make an introduction to you and where they are. Okay, in that same area, I have naturalized daffodils. And they are so good to do that. So there's a mass of these. And when the grandchildren come, mm -hmm. one of the things that they enjoy so much is going back there and picking their handfuls. And That's I sweet. don't say anything That's because right. there's plenty of them, <laughs> That's okay? Right. So this is a very natural area, and it's a great place to have of them because they're strong growing. And I'd like to introduce you to some of those. This one you may not have met, plant it. It's called Thalia. It's white and it's beautiful. Love it. And a similar one planted again along the pathways of my garden. This is another white daffodil. Ice wings. White as can be. Pretty Just name too. Ice wings. Absolutely. Mm. And uh, the last one we'll mention in this segment, Deb. Mm -hmm. Is one called geranium. No, it is not a geranium. <laughs> it's a daffodil. Daffodil narcissus, okay? Most people refer to these smaller flowering ones as narcissus, but they're all in the same family. And this one is a, sends up multiple blooms at the top. It's a late one, too. It will take you sometimes into May. And it's fragrant. I didn't mention this about a lot of these bulbs. But they're fragrant. That's great. A lot of them are fragrant. And timing on getting these bulbs in. As soon right as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fine. Yes, you can plant these bulbs right into December. Mm -hmm. But the sooner you get them in the ground, the better. Because then they have the chance to put their roots down. Right. Good. Plant as soon as you can. And take advantage of this weather. It's, yeah, it's, gonna it's be great. Nice out there. Well, yeah. it's going to be cool. A little chilly, but that's you okay. can take it's out good. some of those annuals and start putting in something else. Absolutely. You're probably tired of them anyway. That's right. <laughs> yeah. We're okay. going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. You know, we were talking at the end of the last segment about the cooler temperatures and that type thing. So we do want to remind you that it's time to bring those houseplants back in if you haven't yet. Yes, it absolutely is mm -hmm. um, because I know I am very guilty often of waiting to the last minute. We've had such beautiful weather. Right. We've just allowed us to keep pushing that thought mm -hmm. in the distance. And for next week's show, I've been working on my garden beside the road. All right. And it's going to be transitioning to the fall look. Mm -hmm. And I'm very hesitant to pull out some of the annuals. Well, I'm going to go home and pull them I out. I know. <laughs> well, because they still look beautiful. So right, you know. right, yes. And they can be a beautiful part of the garden, but they're in my way right, right now. Right. Okay. Well, once the, so whole, once the cold hits some of those. come out yeah. and now put those kale in. Mm -hmm. Ooh, we've got <clears> some beautiful. We'll talk about that next That's week. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've got a few more yes. bulbs to show us. I want to share quickly with you um, a few more of these unusual bulbs. 
we are all accustomed to the beauty of the daffodils, the narcissus, okay? Many of us don't use or don't know this split cup daffodil. It has had good longevity for me also, and it is so unusual and so beautiful. There's a number of varieties of this. And in the next picture, I, I had a love affair? I would say so. <laughs> I love these beautiful long cup daffodils that are a nice bicolor and often there's a halo behind them and if you plant these where the sun hits it ooh, from behind perfect. ooh it's nice makes <laughs> for a nice picture too mm -hmm. the following picture ah, so many colors this is the little short cut narcissus they can be planted usually in groups of at least five can be more, of course, mm -hmm. depending upon the space that you have. Then we get into spectacular bulbs. <gasps> nah, the love affair goes on. <laughs> <laughs> These are the allium and many different kinds of allium. These are planted with foxglove, which is primarily a biennial, needs to be planted in the fall will grow over winter, and look what it's doing now. Woo, it's nice. blooming with those. And that those. bold contrast yes. with the purple and the white is great. Here's another area. This is a large perennial border, and you can see that some of the foliage in the front are things that have finished. Mm -hmm. They're the daffodils that came and have come and gone, and now it's the allium that's in center stage, and there's even little pop peas growing. Right, and, and next week we're going to talk about hiding some of that foliage. Oh, we mm -hmm. are. Yes, we are. How could you not introduce yourself to this plant? It is spectacular, and the name's enough to kill it. <laughs> okay, pronounce that name for us. <laughs> somebody's going to call in and correct me, I'm sure. Nectariscordum. It is a type of cilia, but there's been a little back and forth in the classification. Tall. It can be two and a half, three feet tall. Blooms late. Here it is blooming in front of a golden facithia. And I think that showcases it just beautifully. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then with the alliums, you need to meet Schuberti. It's tall and loose and absolutely beautiful. And it can hold its own in the perennial border. It's blooming with columbine and napita, and you can see the daylilies are coming on. We're talking about hiding foliage, this does it. That's what you need to do. Plant between your perennials, but be sure they've got ample space. Now, I want to give you another great hint, okay? And that is, you should be changing over your uh, containers now into pansies and it's absolutely so much fun when the customers come in to the Fair Oaks location which is where I am they all are just looking through the pansies and they're saying I just don't know which one to get because they're all so beautiful industry has brought us the most beautiful colors you can imagine and it takes a few minutes to decide what do I want okay I've tucked this particular group of pansies into, as you can see, a clay container. I'm going to leave these clay containers out in my garden, on my deck, out on the patio, at my front entrance. Will they break over winter? Maybe. S not very often. I've lost very few of these over time. Primarily because I don't let them sit on the ground, I don't leave any saucers underneath them, and I don't think I can lift this, but it's sitting on a trivet that has wheels. That means that I can move it around. Also, protection for your deck. I've almost ruined the wood on my deck because I didn't do that. Now everything's on uh, a trivet type thing. Yes, you can enjoy the peppers for a while, they may be taken out by frost, but 
underneath are these beautiful, beautiful pansies that will perform until, unless we get really strong winter, they'll slack off and then they'll start back in the spring. Into this container, as you are planting them up, tuck some of these bulbs inside. I would say in this container, which is probably 12 to 14 inches at the top, put no more than five or six bulbs down inside of here. Yes, leave them over the winter and they will surprise you in the spring. This is one of the absolute favorite things that you can do right now in your garden. That's great. Peggy, thank you so much for all these great ideas. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to take your phone calls. So if you have any questions, please give us a call, 703-387-1046, and we'll look forward to talking to you in just a couple of minutes. Welcome back. It's phone call time here on Maryfield's Gardening Advisor, so we'd love to hear from you. Our phone number here is 703-387-1046. And Peggy, our first caller is Laura, who's calling from Bowie. Hi, Laura. Hi. Good How morning. are you? I am fine. I have a follow-up question on the Dutch iris you were talking about. Yes. I bought some bulbs to plant this year. After the flower blooms, does the foliage draw, uh, die back like the other bulb plants, or does it stay till fall? It does not stay till fall. It stays and actually stays pretty for a while after the bloom. And you know, the best thing that you can do is when it finishes blooming is cut those blooms away and let all that energy go back into the bulb. But you must, absolutely must, leave all of this foliage up while it's green and do not cut it off. Um, but eventually, yes, the foliage of that will disappear. So is, don't forget where you planted it. <laughs> is it like the others that it needs space or can I put it among perennials? Oh, you can put that one among perennials. Okay. Absolutely. And, and to do it because there's some beautiful colors out there. And like I say, incredible cut flower. I oh. love it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks for, for the break. call. Take care. Okay, let's see. Our next caller is Jim, who's calling from Alexandria. Hi, Jim. Good morning. Good morning. So I thought the presentations this morning were just great. Well, thank you. M my problem is adapting them to a deer-infested uh, <laughs> landscape. And so uh, we're, Does she know we're deer in infested Alexandria, landscape? we're pretty well infested uh, with, uh, or overpopulated, I guess would be a better term. But uh, in my garden in particular, we're looking for something that we can change out because what we've got seems to be a deer buffet and mm -hmm. I'm trying to get something that will yeah. sustain itself without having to have continuous spraying of deer repellent. Right and, and I'm with you 100% uh, as I said to you earlier in the program I feel like I have my own personal set of deer you know and I'm not really fond of them. Um, the Bambi long ago lost my interest okay. The average person has no idea, unless they've been confronted with it, how destructive the deer can be. They really have eaten a lot of our national forest. I mean, it's not just our personal land, but there were, they, I think they're a bigger problem in our little metropolitan areas because there's nothing out there other than the automobile that's going to give them an issue. All right, back to this. Yes, there are things that you can can plant that are deer resistant. Normally, and I say deer resistant because if they're hungry enough, I ch I'm not sure that they wouldn't eat anything, you know. Um, Helleborus, the one I talked about earlier, is a fantastic uh, plant. It doesn't bloom all summer, but it blooms for a long time in the spring. We have good lists of things that are deer resistant. Now talking about, let's go back to the spraying, because if I took the chance to bring this Bob X down here in my car, I'm going to talk about it, okay? I once spilled some of this in my car and I've never, it's never gotten over it, you know? Bob X is an all natural product. There are a number of these types of repellents on the market. I have used this consistently now for a number of years. 
and it has proven its worth. It isn't cheap to do this, but if there's certain things that are your favorites, follow the directions on here. Rain does not wash it off. However, when your tulips are coming up and you see the buds there, spray it, okay? That's very important to do. So it's how you use these. It's new growth that you have to spray. And uh, confine its use to those things that you like best. May I take a, a little bit more of your time, Jim, to say we're about to hit another destructive part of the deer population. And that is that the bucks will rub with their antlers and in my garden, if I don't go out and protect those most expensive of those things, and they seem to know the ones that are most expensive, with a fencing around it or something to protect it, they'll tear up those plants with their antlers. So I, I hope I gave you a satisfactory answer. No, that was a great answer. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks Bye -bye. for the call. Take care. Okay, let's see. Joy is calling from Noakesville. Hi, Joy. Hi, how are you today? Good morning. We're great. How about you? I'm uh, doing just fine, thank you. Good. I love your show, first of all. I want to tell thank you that. You thank but you. I'm very excited because last year I did exactly what Peggy suggested, and I did the bulbs in the containers. Yes, great. And I did about 20 of them, and I thought, okay, I've never done this before, so let me go ahead and try it. And right. they, the daffodils came up just simply beautiful. So sure. simply beautiful. I yeah. lined them along my um, entryway, and I love the fact that I could spot plant them once they came up right. in different areas of my yard. So I wanted to thank you very, very much for doing that, and I'm excited because I'm going to be doing that again this year. Thank right. you, Joy. Mm -hmm. And we really had no time to get into that today, but she is talking about putting those bulbs into the containers. I am a container person, as you well know. Yes, you do have to keep things watered, but not over winter. Um, we'd have to have an awfully, awfully dry winter right. to worry about that. Uh, generally mm -hmm. speaking, uh, I don't worry about them. Eh, now I, I keep an eye <laughs> on my boxwood, okay? <laughs> because boxwood overwinters beautifully in containers. But I'm so pleased that you've had good luck. And this is why I just said to you earlier, as you're potting up those containers, um, put some bulbs into them, okay? Did you Absolutely. have a question, Joy? Uh, well, I just wanted to tell you that I haven't had as much success with my herbs, but I think that was due to my neglect as opposed to the plant's neglect. I tried doing containers on my deck, and I think the deck was just simply too hot. Hmm. Well, so. generally speaking, herbs enjoy a hot environment or reasonably hot, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and they should have worked well on your deck. You have to watch your watering with herbs. They want to be moist, but they don't want to be wet. So that may be one issue. I think it was that they got too dry. Too dry? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think that's why I said I think that was my neglect. So I'm going yeah. to try. Yeah. Try uh, again. Some, okay. Maybe some self-watering tips. You know, uh, like uh, like you were talking about doing the self-watering around the trees. Yeah. I was thinking about trying to figure out how I could do that with the pots. You know, I, I did you use the soil moist, the little crystals that turn into moisture? Did you no. use it? That's what you really need That'll to work, not to worry about the gels or, <clears throat> or spikes. What, is, I'm sorry, uh, what did you call it again? The product is soil moist. Okay. And and you don't don't spill it and get it wet because ooh it's it's the same stuff that's in baby diapers, mm -hmm. okay? Right, it well, absorbs water and then releases it. So but follow your directions. If a little is good, a lot is not better. That's for okay. sure. <laughs> Unless you're in a water garden, okay? <laughs> Sure. Thank okay, you, well, Joy. Thank you very much. Yes. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Have a Bye -bye. great weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. We're going to take a break and come back with more of your phone calls. Okay, let's get right back to our callers. Gretchen is calling from Forestville. Gretchen, thanks so much for holding. How are you? Fine. How are you doing? Good, Good morning. Thanks. Good. Love your show. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I have a dogwood tree. It's over 40 years old, and it's been cut down twice accidentally, but oh. it has come back beautifully. Not a problem. <laughs> this year, um, it came back, it bloomed, and 
uh, I have my my uh, red uh, berries on it, and yes. it's now looked like it's trying to bloom again. The entire tree has blooms on it. Your dogwood? My dogwood. It well, has never done this wow. before. <laughs> well, indeed. <laughs> well, number one, it sounds like you have a magical dogwood. That's right. Wants to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Two have been cut down twice. Yes. And continues to come up and be beautiful. Yes. It's, it must be multi-stem, right? Uh, let's see. Let me look out the window uh, now. Coming out. Uh, coming out of the ground is one stem. Really? Ooh. Yes. Well, now that is my, you, now listen, you just have a unique dog, okay? <laughs> Absolutely unique. But should, should I worry because it, it's getting cold with the uh, blooms no. on it now? No. Because it's got the red, you know, berries on it and the blooms. Just enjoy it. Whatever is blooming right now, you won't see next spring, however. I you know. know. If there are still buds on it that are not open, because you can differentiate, you know, the buds and the leaves and whatever. Um you should get some bloom but if you whatever heavy bloom that you're getting right now will be now and won't come in the spring okay? okay but it is rather unusual that it do that but like i say you obviously have a very unusual dogwood and you know what we are getting a lot of these reblooming things yeah. as time goes by and this is how new plants are found Gretchen is something that's performing in an unusual manner so maybe you can make a fortune off that dogwood <laughs> <laughs> well my roadies are blooming again also now sometimes that happens okay. I, it's that will happen you'll get an azalea or a rhododendron that will give a spasmodic bloom, okay. and a lot of times that's because we have some some very warm temperatures going into fall, which is probably the case with the dogwood too. Okay. But well. all I can say is just enjoy. All right. Thank okay. you. Okay. So Thank you for calling. I want, I want her soil in forest. <laughs> it must be good. <laughs> <laughs> must be. Thanks so much, Gretchen. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Sandy is calling from Lesby. Hi, Sandy. Oh, hi. How are you? Good morning. Great. How are you? Love your program, and I certainly appreciate you taking calls with questions. Thank well, you. Well, thank you. Uh, I've wanted to know what do I need to do when I bring my pot of plants, plants in in order to get rid of the bugs? Well, the ideal thing would be to spray them before you bring them in. Now, you may, you may need to run down to the garden center and get the appropriate spray to do that. And and usually it's a, an oil, okay? Uh, it will be marked for things like tropicals. And give them a thorough, thorough spraying and let them dry before you bring them in. Now, all that being said, if you can't do it before, you need to do it immediately after. The ideal is to do it before you bring them in, okay? Spray under the bottom of the leaves because that's the the place that is that harbors insects most and in the in the crotches of the little leaf nodes. Spray them before you bring them in. It's the best thing to do. Okay, and good luck to you on, on, on bringing them in. So there's nothing in the soil I need to do with the bugs in the soil? Do you have bugs in your soil right now? Sometimes I see those little armor things. Okay, and, and they can be an issue. If you've got a lot of those, there's soil drenches that you can use also. And, and you, again, preferably would do that before you brought it in. But, but with most of those, sometimes if you keep your soil too moist, you get the little gnats coming up, okay? And you ha may have to do a drench on those too. But yes, there are safer products. Look for the more organic ones, okay? All right, thank you very thank much. You. Thanks, have a great weekend. You too. Thank you. Okay, let's see, Billy is calling from D.C. Hi, Billy. Hi, how are you? Good. Good morning. Thank you so much for taking my call. I love your name. My mom has the, the name of Billy as well, but I yes. use. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's happening, I had, uh, my mother has these rose bushes. Some of them have died now. I've tried everything. They start off beautiful, and then they get all these funny little <laughs> spots on them. And I've tried different things that people have told me, but it still doesn't happen. They still bloom. This time I had one where I kept cutting back and they start growing. I said, I'll, let it, I'll leave it alone because it was so flimsy. It's like 12 feet high. Oh, dear. <laughs> but it's only like two long branches of them. And I know, I don't know when I should cut it and what I should okay. spray on it so it'll okay. come back next year okay. without these little 
whatever is eating on them. Right. Okay, that, that's a lot more than I can possibly answer in the short period of time that we okay. have here. But we have some Rose experts, definitely. One of which happens to be Debbie's husband. That's right. you know. <laughs> he'll, be at the, he'll be at the store tomorrow. Give him a call. Absolutely. Okay. And what, this and is, would, this, what number would I call uh, him on? The 703-968-9600 uh, uh, at the 968-9600? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, oh. all that being He's said, for Rob. Uh, he I, I just say briefly, if your rose is growing that tall, is it getting a lot of sunshine? Yes. Okay. Well, and, and he will tell you that you can cut it back some, and he will also tell you the appropriate spray that you will begin with as the foliage emerges in the spring. And and there's a couple of very effective ones. But our time has gone, Our time really. has gone. Okay, what's his name? What's his name? Rob. Rob Cap. Rob Cap. Okay, thank so, you, and God bless you. Thank you. Thanks so much you for too. calling. Okay, we have run out of time. Thank you so much for these uh, great ideas, and we're going to continue next week, right? Absolutely. We're going to go on with the bulb thing. That's right. More on the tulips. More, more, yes. more. More bulbs are better. <laughs> so we hope you have a great week. Uh, don't forget to uh, stop at the uh, Fall Garden Festival and the seminars. Bye-bye. Right.